And now we're going to talk about the circulatory system. The circulatory system is all about transport, taking things from point A to point B. Also, it's called the circulatory system and it operates in a circular fashion. We'll see how all that works out as we go. First things first, uh, there's three major parts to the circulatory system. Uh, the first thing is the heart, that all signify with the Roman numeral one. The second thing is blood vessels. Think of these as tubes to carry blood. They consist of arteries, capillaries, and veins. And then a question you need to come back to once everything is said and done, it, and as we go through, is why are the blood vessels, arteries, and veins not color-coded? And in a sense, what I'm asking here is, are all vein, veins the same? Are all arteries the same? And the last thing, uh, the third part on here would be the blood itself. So starting with the heart, Roman numeral one. The heart has four chambers to it. It's a muscular pump uh, and it forces the blood around the body. The top parts are called the atriums, right and left, and I'll get into that in a second. The bottom cha chambers are called ventricles. And then there's lots of different valves anytime we have something coming into or out of the heart going into the heart there's going to be a valve from this spot to that spot there's a valve and the valves basically help control the pathway or the flow of the blood in the body so here's our heart uh, it has a few different parts to it i'm going to start right here in this chamber okay the upper right chamber of the heart well, wait a second this is on the left hand side right put your fingers out and that you gotta your fingers should look like that with your thumbs in the middle this is the L that means that's left well true but what if you were looking at it from the perspective of someone that you're looking at a per you're looking at yourself in the mirror or you're looking at another person if you're looking at an another person this would be their right side and this over here would be their left side. So it's not our right and it's not our left. It's the person that we are looking at's right and the person that we're looking at's left. So here's our first chamber on the, on the top. Okay, so again, on the top, that's an atrium and it's on the right hand side. So this is our right atrium. Our right atrium um, gets blood from this guy right here called the vena cava okay the vena cava is kind of the main vein that brings blood back to the heart from the body so from our right atrium blood will flow down to the right ventricle so our atriums are on top ventricles are on the bottom so and also if you can notice there's a valve right here Okay, to make sure that this blood does flow only one way from atrium to ventricle. Then there's another valve right here to make sure that the blood will go from the right ventricle out. Okay, and this is, this is deoxygenated blood. It needs to get oxygen, so we need to go to the lungs to get oxygen. So this tube right here this blood vessel that's going to carry blood from the right ventricle to the lungs is called the pulmonary artery the pulmonary artery is going to take blood from the right ventricle to the lungs so once we're at the lungs the blood is now going to get oxygen the oxygen is gonna come back, it's kinda hard to tell because it comes behind, but it's gonna come through this tube right here and come behind, come behind, come behind to this chamber of the heart right here. And it gets, it's on top, so it's gonna be an atrium, and it's on the left side, so it's the left atrium. Again, there's a nice little valve here. Blood's gonna go from the left atrium to the left ventricle, right? Atrium's on top, ventricle's on the bottom left ventricle went from the left atrium to the left ventricle this chamber right here 
And then last but not least, the blood's gonna go through this valve and go out the aorta, which is kind of the main artery out of the heart. So that's the flow of blood. We're gonna get blood from the vena cava into the right atrium, right atrium to the right ventricle, out the pulmonary artery, because we're taking blood away from the heart, to the lungs. From the lungs, we're gonna go to the pulmonary vein. Let me write that for you. Pulmonary vein. Pulmonary vein brings blood to the left atrium, from the left atrium to the left ventricle, and from the left ventricle out of the aorta. So blood vessels, Roman numeral two from that first slide. Arteries and arterioles, they start with an A, and they carry blood away from the heart, away from the heart arteries away keep the a's together the main artery as we just mentioned in our last slide is the aorta where all the oxygenated blood leaves the heart at the left ventricle the veins and venules carry blood to the heart the main vein as we mentioned before is called the vena cava where all the deoxygenated blood enters the heart at the right atrium and then we have our capillaries. Capillaries are sites of exchange, okay, where diffusion happens. A lot of times it's gases, but it can be anything. Gases or any other material in the bloodstream or out of the bloodstream. Anytime we need to exchange materials from the circulatory system to a body part, capillaries is where that's going to take place. So veins and arteries, there's a little bit more, there's just one thing more that we need to go over with this. Veins are thinner than arteries. Arteries are thicker than veins. If you think about it, the left ventricle has to pump blood all the way down to your feet, but then all the way back to your heart. That, that means right here in these arteries, that's a lot of pressure to build up to make sure that this blood gets all the way back to your heart. So that means the arteries have to be thicker because there's so much pressure from this left ventricle that has to pump the blood all the way, not just to a body part, but then all the way back to the heart. Veins have lower pressure in them because lower pressure because they don't have to pump as much. There's not as much pressure on them to get back. Uh, so the other thing about them is because there's less pressure, they also have stop valves in them. And it's kind of like a little gate and a little gate. So as the blood comes up, the blood comes up, the blood comes up, it'll push through this little gate and then gravity, right? gravity's working it'll come back down and push and this area will fill up with blood and fill up with blood and fill up with blood until we get past our next gate so those little gates are our stop valves and we see those in veins to help prevent against gravity we want to make sure that in our circulatory system it stays in a circle and we don't have blood flowing back the wrong way. Don't want that. So here we're just showing that the arteries are a little bit thicker than the veins, again, due to the pressure of the left ventricle. So Roman numeral three, the blood. What's in the blood? Well, probably most important for what we're going to talk about right now is the red blood cells, which oftentimes are abbreviated as RBCs, red blood cells. Uh, the main job of the red blood cells is to transport oxygen, oxygen, uh, and sometimes carbon dioxide, and we'll talk about that in a moment, but it's the biggest thing would be the oxygen, not necessarily as much of the carbon dioxide. The main molecule within the red blood cells is hemoglobin. 
hemoglobin is what physically uh, will take and hold the oxygen. We call that a chemical bond. It's going to bind the oxygen to the red blood cell. And just so you know, hemoglobin has a chemical or an element called iron in it. Iron is the red, or is a red color. Iron in the hemoglobin of your red blood cells, iron is what makes your blood the red color. Next we have white blood cells, which sometimes we refer to as WBCs. Uh, they help defend the body against diseases and harmful things. This is part of your immune system that we'll get into uh, at a later time. The next thing is platelets. Platelets help to clot our blood. So when you get a cut, the platelets will come and kind of act like a, a net and build on each other and build on each other and block the cut so all of your blood doesn't go out of your body. It's kind of a good thing. And then last but not least, we have our plasma. And plasma is a lot of water, but it's the liquid part of the blood. It helps transport proteins. Carbon dioxide will dissolve in the plasma sometimes as a different molecule. Um, but think of it as sugar, dissolve, put, you should put sugar in water and then you stir it up and then all the sugar dissolves in the water. Carbon dioxide will do that, but in the plasma. And so there's lots of different things around there. So the blood, red blood cells with hemoglobin to transport the oxygen, white blood cells for our immune system, platelets for blood clotting, and plasma to dissolve stuff. It's the liquid part of our blood. This is a red blood cell. To me, it kind of looks like a jelly-filled donut. So we got our outside of the donut, our inside of the donut, and then this part's filled in. Um, other people say that it looks like a big giant circle that's indented in the middle too. Whatever you like, there you go. That's a red blood cell. So here's what's happened here. Inside we have all of our hemoglobin molecules. Here's oxygen. Once we breathe in the oxygen, and it diff the oxygen diffuses into the capillaries, the hemoglobin is going to take it and carry the oxygen or bind the oxygen to itself. So then the red blood cell with the oxygen bound to it in the hemoglobin is going to travel around to all the body parts that it needs to go to. And once it's at a body part, being the red blood cell, is at a body part that needs oxygen, hemoglobin will release the oxygen so the oxygen can go to the tissue cells or the body parts. So remember tissues or body parts have two needs. They need to get oxygen so they can go through cellular respiration. Remember that's to make energy. And then the other thing that body parts need to do is they need to get rid of carbon dioxide. And where did that carbon dioxide come from? Oh yeah, remember that's a waste product of cellular respiration. Whoops, ran out of room. Uh, oxygenated blood goes to the tissues, the body parts, and away from the lungs. Deoxygenated blood goes away from the body parts towards the heart and towards the lungs. Here's our basic flow of blood. Okay, take a mental snapshot of it. Because down here in tissues or any body part, okay, if blood is in a body part, it has to go to the heart, specifically the right side of the heart. If blood is in the right side of the heart, it has to go to the lungs. If blood is in the lungs, it has to go to the heart, specifically the left side of the heart. And if the blood is in the left side of the heart, it has to go to a body part. So now, my question for you is, if we know that, if that is true, okay, can, I don't know, can a blood go from your right pinky finger straight to your kidneys, okay, directly? Can that happen? Well, let's go back to the chart. Let's say we're at a body part, okay? Now we're at our right pinky finger, okay? Can, the, can we go straight to the kidneys, which again is a 
a body part. Can that happen? Well, if it's at a body part, where does it have to go? To the right side of the heart. It's in the right side of the heart to the lungs, lungs to the left side of the heart, left side of the heart to a body part. So we can't go directly there because that's not the flow of blood. If we need blood to go from the right pinky finger to the kidneys, it has to follow and go through the whole circulatory part of the circulatory system. So here's the path of blood that we just went through. We already know the parts of the heart. Um, you don't necessarily need to know all of uh, these valves uh, to be specific. We just need to know that there are valves there. But what you should be able to do is start with any part on here. So if you start with the left ventricle, you should be able to name the pathway of blood in order to go from the left ventricle all the way through until you got to the left atrium or back to the left ventricle. Because remember, the circulatory system is in a pathway in a circle. So why can't we say that all arteries carry oxygenated blood? And why can't we say that all veins carry deoxygenated blood? Well, let's start right here at the vena cava. And remember, the vena cava carries uh, blood that is high in carbon dioxide and low in oxygen. So that's going to give blood that's low in oxygen to the right atrium, the first chamber. From the right atrium goes through the valve to the right ventricle. And then now we're going from the right ventricle away from the heart into the lungs. So this blood, remember, is high in carbon dioxide but low in oxygen. And we're going carrying blood away from the heart. Arteries away okay so that right there is the reason why we can't say that all arteries carry oxygenated blood so how can we can't say that all veins carry deoxygenated blood well that is this guy right here okay and this guy right here the pulmonary veins remember we said veins carry blood to the heart so now this blood is coming back from the lungs. It's high in oxygen and it's low in carbon dioxide. So it's full of oxygen or oxygenated blood and it's coming back and it's gonna empty into the left atrium to go to the left ventricle and out the aorta to go back to all the body. That's high in oxygen. And that's the pulmonary vein because it's going to the heart. So that is the reason why we can't say that all veins carry deoxygenated blood. At this stage, you should be able to describe the path an oxygen molecule would take from outside of your body to a cell in the capillaries of a muscle cell in your right big toe basically a body part. So get oxygen all the way through the respiratory system, all the way through the circulatory system to your right big toe. Don't forget about your diaphragm. Also describe the path carbon dioxide would go from your right big toe to outside of your body. So again, get that CO2 for all throughout your circulatory system, then out of your respiratory system. Don't forget about your diaphragm. Again, I am also assuming that you've already taken care of the respiratory system when you've done this. And that is all she wrote. It's like this and like that and like this, Anna. It's like that and like this and like that, Anna. It's like this. So just chill till the next episode.